nature and that I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things and I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case, open and shut No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut Today we'll go bird watching, tomorrow we'll catch toads The next day we'll take photographs of bugs along the road I never get the feeling that I'm in a rut That's why I'm a nature nut Well, I'm a nature nut, I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things and I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case, open and shut No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut Today is Bird House Day, or Bird Box Day, as some people say those who are picky about such things, we're going to explore the world of bird houses. But before we get started, I want to get clear on one thing. It's amazing how many people, completely rational adult people, don't know the difference between a bird house and a bird feeder. This is a bird feeder. You put seeds in it, the birds come to it, and they eat the seeds. It's like a restaurant. This is a bird house. It has a hole in the front, the bird goes in the hole, makes a nest, lays eggs, raises a family. It's like an apartment or a hotel. If we can keep that straight, we'll have a good time today exploring the world of bird houses. Now I'm not a major league bird house kind of guy. I mean, I like them, but I haven't had a lot of bird houses in my yard over the years. But I do have the fondest memories of a bird house that used to sit outside my bedroom window when I was growing up. And uh, it had house sparrows in it. No other birds, nothing more exciting than that, just house sparrows. But I really liked them. The female I called Fraggy, and no, the male I called Fraggy, and the female I called Maggie. And they would raise their little house sparrow chicks in there, and in the winter they'd tuck in there overnight and, and just use it as a little roost to sleep away from the cold. And I would wake up in the morning to the sounds of Fraggy and Maggie and the chicks just chirping away and oh, it was, it was really nice. Kind of missed those days, but lucky thing is I've still got some photos left over. Here's a picture that a friend of mine took of Maggie sitting on top of that very birdhouse. Yeah, she was beautiful, wasn't she? And how about this? This is Fraggy, the male, feeding some of the chicks. Man, that brings back the memories for me. I don't know how long those uh, home, home movies are going to hold up either. They get kind of brittle and crispy after all these years. Anyway, let's go out. Let's explore the world of bird houses. And uh, let's, I mean, there's lots of questions to answer. What kind of house attracts what kind of birds? Why do they nest in boxes anyway? I mean, don't birds make nests that look like little cereal bowls made out of grass and mud? Good question. Let's go find out. Now, you know, a lot of people, they're not quite satisfied just going to the store and buying a birdhouse. I mean, that's, that's just too easy. It's more fun to build your own. Me, I'm no great carpenter, but if I can build a birdhouse, so can you. I've got all the equipment ready, safety goggles, gotta think safety first, hard hat just in case anything falls out of the sky on me, you know, distant tornadoes can pick up things the size of fish and drop them miles away so you never know what's gonna happen. I've got my carpentry apron, this is my granddad's old carpentry apron, Grampy Van we called him, he was a dandy carpenter, he passed on none of those jeans to me handmade by Auntie Corin. I feel, I feel good. I feel like nothing can go wrong. And I've got the most important tool, that pencil. Usually you keep these over your ear, but I'm going to use this today. Now before you start any project like this, you need a plan. Plans are usually drawn out on things like uh, paper towels, napkins. So what we're going to do, we're not going to go, we're not going to start right off with a very complex uh, birdhouse, a project that requires great craftsmanship skills like this guy here, oh, that's nice, but that's advanced. We're gonna start with a basic birdhouse, a birdhouse that will be acceptable to bluebirds and swallows and house sparrows, but not to starlings. We'll make sure that this box is not acceptable to starlings because of its size and dimensions. Now this one will be about five, six inches on a side, 
You know what I mean? Like every side will be five or six inches. In fact, we'll know exactly whether it's five or six inches, but you know, there's a lot of variation that you can, that the birds can tolerate because, you know, tree cavities aren't all exactly the same size. They don't mind a little, uh, little creativity on your part. And we'll have a one and a half inch hole. Just write that down here so we don't forget. We'll have some drainage in that thing. We'll have, um, and then the back piece will be longer than the other pieces so we can put a nail through the back piece onto the fence post. Anything else I need to remember? No, that's good. Now that we've got a plan, we're likely not to go astray. So let's measure this thing out on the wood and uh, have it all right there in front of us before we start cutting. Because once you start cutting, there's no turning back. Doesn't that look good? Alrighty, perfect, very welcoming. I don't understand why birds would want to see the world through this kind of a perspective, but hey, that's their business. I'm happy about it. Now, the final phase, the nailing phase, where it all comes together and starts to look like a birdhouse. Hoo-hoo, <laughs> right, let's do it. It's not perfect, but we'll just see if the birds can deal with this amount of uh, ventilation and drip control. I think it'll be all right. They'll fill it up with uh, twigs and leaves and feathers and things. It's done. Let's put it up. I'm proud of it. Birds are not the only critters that use nesting boxes, and you can now buy boxes for bats and for hibernating butterflies. Pardon me, it just looked a little silly there. Okay, let's hope for the best. <laughs> Who knows, I mean, you know, maybe a tree swallow will use it. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, well, since birdhouse building is not a real natural talent for me, I've come out into the countryside where my friends Bob and Jan Carroll have some tremendous birdhouses going at their bed and breakfast place. This box behind me, that's the typical sort of uh, standard bluebird swallow box. And sometimes they do get mountain bluebirds in these boxes, but right now there are tree swallows looking at them and starting to collect little nest materials and pretty soon they'll be laying their eggs. The tree swallow is one of the most desired birds in birdhouses because it's a beautiful bird, the male especially. Oh, so iridescent on the back and then beautiful white underneath. They're a gentle bird, they eat insects and uh, everybody likes them. Graceful in flight, they make a nice little sound. You can't help but like tree swallows. But uh, you, won't attract, you won't be able to get tree swallows into your birdhouse everywhere. You've got to do a little bit of research, find out what sorts of birds are in your area before you count on attracting any particular species. Ah, did you see that? This is the kind of thing that really bugs me about robins. You know, I've had two robin shelves on our house for a couple of years now, and the robins never touch them. Bob put up one little piece of wood here in his, uh, in his workshop, right above the workbench, and the robins are happy there. The male comes in, brings food, the female's feeding the chicks. It's a beautiful little scene. This just shows to Goya that robins, other birds, they don't think the way we think they should think. They think like birds, and there's nothing we can do about it. There's at least one wren calling in among all these other birds around here. This is the sort of box that wrens like, a deep box with a small hole. Chickadees will use them too. And most people like wrens. I mean, they're, they're a cute little bird. They have a, have a bubbly, happy song. And they're kind of nifty, but they do have some irritating habits. 
Wrens will sometimes choose one box to uh, use for their nest and then fill all the other boxes in the area with sticks so that other birds can't use them. I'm talking house wrens, by the way, here. Not winter wrens or Carolina wrens or Buick's wrens or marsh wrens or sedge wrens, rock wrens or canyon wrens or even cactus wrens. House wrens, little woodpile skulkers. Neat birds. The biggest member of the swallow family is the purple martin, at least in North America, and it lives in the biggest member of the bird box family, the purple martin house. And these, these swallows, they're, they're amazing because they live in little colonies and they don't mind living all together. So this is kind of an apartment complex for them. And they're, these houses are very, very, uh, they're complex, they're expensive, and uh, you know, a lot of people put up martin houses and then they don't get purple martins and they're upset about it. You have to do everything you possibly can to do it right. You get it up high on a post, you make sure there's nothing higher than the, the martin box in any direction for about, you know, 20 feet or uh, 7 meters or so. And it helps to be near some water and it helps to have a good supply of bugs flying around in the air for them to eat. They're, uh, they're real bug-eating birds, beautiful birds, but if you don't get the martins, well, the uh, place will just fill up with house sparrows and that sort of thing. Most people keep the holes in the box plugged until the martins come back in the spring, pull the plugs out, and hope for the best. Some birds, such as kingfishers and bank swallows, nest in holes in the earth, not trees. Perhaps someone could design a nest box for them, too. Swoopy the swallow was dreaming by home as north in the spring he flew. Swoopy and Loopy had raised five chicks in that nook where their family grew. It really was a hole, you know, a hole in a box of pine. Little Raniel McDaniel had put it there, one of his own design. Plywood box on a fence post line That's the hole that I call home And as long as there's boxes There'll be swallows on high And bluebirds are roaming in the gloam Down from the clouds and over the hill To that old familiar clearing by the lane But the head poking out of the box Wasn't his, it belonged to a swallow named Wayne. He tried another on down the line. There was one that looked all right. But the Starling clan were deep within and they were always ready for a fight. Another box filled with sticks. Those pesky wrens were here. The next one down, well, the side fell off. Little Raniel's no great shakes as an engineer. Plywood box on a fence post line, that's the hole that I call home. And as long as there's boxes, there'll be swallows on high, and bluebirds that are roaming in the gloom. It was looking bleak this time round, no houses, holes, or nooks. The gals would soon be back in town to see how Swoopy's territory looks. But little Raniel, in his own spare time, working hard and real tenacious, he'd been building a birdhouse the likes of none, modern but a bit ostentatious. Swoopy saw it, he fell in love, a house no other bird could stomach. The dangest nest you ever saw on a post, on a country hummock. Plywood box on a fence post line, that's the hole that I call home. And as long as there's boxes, there'll be swallows on high, and bluebirds that are roaming in the gloom. As long as there's boxes, there'll be swallows on high,
my granddad built this ladder, you know, every time I use it, I think to myself I should buy a better ladder, but I'm still quite attached to it. I live in a suburban neighborhood, and there's no way that I'm going to attract bluebirds or swallows, and the most common birds in my yard are definitely house sparrows. Now, I like house sparrows, I've told you that before, but a lot of people, they hate house sparrows, and I don't want to get on their bad side by promoting house sparrow nesting. See, the house sparrow is an introduced bird, it also competes with uh, some of the other birds, so I thought, why not try for the two species that I might be able to get, chickadees and robins. This box should be good for chickadees, I've had it up for about a year, I don't think anything's been using it, so hold on a sec, we'll have a look inside. You can see that the uh, outside of the hole is scratched up. I think that's from house sparrows trying to get in, trying to make the hole bigger or something. I once came home and found a male house sparrow with his head jammed sideways in the, in the hole and I had to rescue him. It's quite sad. He was okay though. He was just really angry. So it's a good idea to open up your nest boxes from time to time, clean them out. Don't do it when the birds have nests in there, of course. Yeah, let's see. Ah, just like I thought. There is nothing in there. Can you see in there? What do we got? Peanut shell, probably a blue jay tucked it in there thinking he could get it later. Ha! Dumb idea. And a little bit of a wasp nest up there. A wasp started, started a nest but never finished it. Yellow jacket wasp. Nope, it's not going to work. What I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to move this box and maybe fill it up a couple of inches deep with wood chips. That'll encourage the chickadees to, uh, to nest in. I'll put it in a pine or a spruce, see if they like it better there. So let's take it off the tree. And then I'll show you my robin shelf that I put up in the hopes of attracting robins to nest in the yard too. I'm so bad at this wood stuff. Oh, embarrassing. Now this is what you need if you want robins to nest in your yard. It's a robin shelf. It's not a cavity. It's just a shelf with a little roof over it. And I put one up on this side of the house and one up on the other side of the house and robins are not using them. They use the big spruce tree in the front of the yard instead. There's, there's some grass and some bird poop in here. The house sparrows have been using it as a place to roost, but the robins haven't been using it at all because if they had, there would be mud in there. Robins use mud to make their nest. So I'll just clean out this grass, and I'm not going to move it. I'm just going to keep hoping for the best. Okay. Oh, man, we're a mess. All right, and for the finishing touch, only found in the very best robin shelves. Here we go, a little more technology. Clean her right out. Whoa, tornado! There we go. Now, if I was a robin, I'd be moving in this afternoon. Let's hope for the best. Female hornbills cement themselves inside their tree cavity nests and rely on the male to pass food through a small hole until the young are ready to fly. One of the ultimate achievements in the bird box business is to get an owl to nest in one of your boxes. Now, some owls are cavity nesters. They'll use old woodpecker holes or places like that. And my friend Ray Cromey put up this nest box. It's intended for saw wet owls, which are very small owls, very cute owls. And he tells me that on May the, or no, pardon me, March the 23rd, a female saw wet lay, laid six eggs in this box. So, Let's see if she's home. I'll just gently tap on the tree here. Hello, Sawetao. Oh, there we go. Amazing. So she's just gonna look out at us. They're a beautiful owl, aren't they? A very small owl, but no ear tufts, none of that sort of, you know, Halloween-y look to them. And, ooh, the look in her eye, it's kind of halfway between cute and very stern. Makes me feel kind of guilty for disturbing her. But she, they're very tame, though. She'll, she'll go right back in there and look after the young, no, no problem. 
Ray tells me that, uh, that now she has five young from those original six eggs, and she's sitting in there with 28 dead deer mice. All the food you need to raise a growing family. So her hubby is a very good provider. He's been working these woods at night and bringing the mice to her, and he's probably sitting in a tree somewhere nearby, listening to every word I say with great interest. Hmm. Very good. Now, if owls are the... Ooh, you hear that? That's good. I was going to say, if owls are the ultimate bird to get in a bird box, the ultimate owl is the barred owl. This is another one of Ray Cromie's bird boxes. That's got to be the male, and hopefully the female is in the box here. So we'll just... Hello? Oh, oh, she's in there for sure. That's good. This is a big owl. It's not the biggest, but it's a very big owl with soft brown eyes. Absolutely beautiful. Most of the time they nest in old snags, busted off stumps. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. Do you see that? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, but wait, there's the, um, there's the male over there. Now, isn't that a neat bird? We won't stay long. I just wanted to show you this. You need a really big box with a big hole. And uh, Ray was telling me it's nice if the hole is close to the trunk of the tree, too, because the little babies can then come sort of scrambling out and they don't just go whoop and land on the forest floor. Nifty bird. I'm just doing a bit of an experiment here. And my conclusion so far is that it's probably not that bad living in a birdhouse. I wouldn't mind it myself if I wasn't a human being. It's kind of, you know, cozy in here. I think people are cavity nesters in their own right. I mean, we, we like to build little boxes around ourselves and, and live under a roof and with walls around us and all that kind of thing. It's okay. It's all right. Anyway, I guess that's about all the time we have for bird boxes. This, uh, this time around. I hope you have good luck with birds in your bird boxes. So until next time, take her easy. I'm an nature nut, and I hope you are too. You know, this makes me feel just like an owl, you know, looking around up there. Same time each and every week, uncensored and uncut. No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut.